Welcome back to AP Chemistry. It's time to learn some more about solubility of ionic compounds and KSP. I'm Jeremy Krug, and this is part of my complete series of the complete AP Chemistry course. So I'd like to invite you to subscribe if you haven't already done so. In this video, we're learning about how to predict whether or not a precipitate will actually form. So if we take two ionic compound solutions and mix them together, are you gonna make a precipitate? Well, here we have an example. It says here that a chemist is adding 100 milliliters of 0.25 molar sodium chloride solution to 200 milliliters of 0.2 molar lead to nitrate solution. And if the KSP for lead to chloride is 1.7 times 10 to the negative fifth, will a precipitate of lead to chloride form? Now, we have the right ions to make this happen. We see that we have some lead ions here, we have some chloride ions, but we know that the KSP represents a threshold. Beyond that, you know, if you go past that threshold, you'll have a precipitate of lead to chloride form. If you don't, well, you won't have a precipitate. So let's think about our plan of attack here. Let's think about our strategy. Now, the main idea here this is a Q versus K problem. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you might want to go back to lesson 18, where we learned about applications of equilibrium. We learned the basic idea behind Q versus K. And if Q uh, is greater than K, then it's going to go uh, to uh, the left. If Q is less than K, it's going to go to the right, and so forth. But this is an application of that in terms of solution chemistry. So here's our strategy. Our first thing that we want to do is find the concentrations of each of the ion components of the possible precipitate after the solutions have been combined. So that's the first thing that we do. That's just a basic solution stoichiometry type of a problem. The second thing we're going to do is to plug those numbers into the expression for Q. Now, in case you've forgotten, the expression for Q looks exactly the same as the expression for K. So it's, it's products over reactants raised to the power of the coefficient. Now, the third step is going to be to compare Q with K. If Q is equal to K, then it would be a saturated solution. If, if Q is greater than K, then we're going to make a precipitate. If Q is less than K, we're not going to make a precipitate. So let's take these steps and solve this problem. So the first thing that we want to do, like I said, is find the concentrations of each component of that potential precipitate after you combine the solution. So let's start with the lead here. So to find the uh, number of moles of lead, first of all, we have to take the molarity times the volume in liters, as we've done many times in this course already. So that's 0.2 molar times 0.2 liters, right? So when we do that, we find that the moles of lead ion in this combined solution is going to be 0.04 moles of lead. Now we have to find the concentration, so we divide that by the total volume. Remember, molarity is moles divided by liters. So what's our total volume here? Well, I think it's safe to assume that the total volume is the sum of the individual volumes, right? You mix two solutions together, volumes are pretty much going to be additive. So we have 100 mils over here, adding it to 200 milliliters. The total volume is 300 milliliters, isn't it? So we're going to have to divide this by 0.3 liters. When we divide that out, we find that our new molarity of lead ion is going to be 0.133 moles per liter. Now let's do the same thing for the chloride. So we'll find the moles of chloride first. And so we do the same thing. We have 0.25 molar chloride times 0.1 liters. You know, 100 milliliters is the same thing as 0.1 liters. So we multiply those and that gives us a, a product of 0.025 moles of chloride. And once again, to find the molarity, we have to take the moles by the new volume, which is still 0.3 liters, isn't it? So when we divide these out, we find that the molarity of chloride is 0.0833 uh, molarity chloride. 
Well, next thing, the, the next thing we have to do is to plug these numbers into the expression for Q. And once again, we have to go back to uh, the reaction here. So if the reaction is this right here, lead chloride yields lead two ions and two chloride ions, then I think we know what the expression for Q is going to be, right? It's just, you know, lead ions times chloride ions squared, just like the K expression was. Now, of course, we leave out the solids. Solids are not a part of equilibrium, are they? Now, we can plug these numbers in that we got in the last step. So lead was 0.133 and chloride was 0.0833 and that gets squared. So when we calculate this arithmetic here, we find that the value for Q is 9.2 times 10 to the negative fourth. So we have our value for Q, our reaction quotient. Now we're going to compare Q with K. So here's Q, we just have that, and then K is right there in the problem, 1.7 times 10 to the minus fifth, and I think we can see that Q is greater than K in magnitude, isn't it? It's not a whole lot larger, but Q is greater. So guess what? That means we're going to make a precipitate. So if we were mixing these together, we can safely predict that we are going to make a precipitate of lead 2 chloride. So that's how this works. Now let's try one more example to practice and make sure that we have this down. In this example, a chemist is going to add 200 milliliters of 1 times 10 to the negative third molar lithium nitrate to 150 milliliters of 0.1 molar sodium phosphate. If the KSP for lithium phosphate is 2.4 times 10 to the negative 11th, will a precipitate of lithium phosphate form? Well, once again, we're going to go through and find the, uh, the new concentrations of both lithium and phosphate. We do have the right ions to make that happen. We have some lithium here, and we have some phosphate that's uh, being provided by the sodium phosphate. So let's start with the lithium. So once again, the moles of lithium will be the 1 times 10 to the minus third molar times 0.2 liters. So we're going to multiply those by each other. And so the moles of lithium will be 2 times 10 to the negative fourth. And to find the molarity, we have to divide moles by the new total volume. Now what's the new total volume? Well, if we go back to the problem, it's 200 milliliters added to 150 milliliters. So that's 350 milliliters, isn't it? So we divide it by 0.350 liters. And when we do that, we find that the molarity of lithium is 5.71 times 10 to the negative fourth molar. Let's do, do the same thing for the other component ion, which would be phosphate. And we can go back up here and find that for phosphate, we'll have to take the 0.1 molar times 0.150 liters. So when we multiply these by each other, we find that the moles of phosphate will be 0.015. And once again, to find the, the, the molarity, we have to divide by the total volume, which is, once again, it's still 0.350 liters, isn't it? So when we divide that, we find that the new molarity of phosphate after the solutions have been mixed will be 0 0.0429 moles per liter of phosphate. So we have our molarity. Now the next thing to do is to plug these numbers we just got into the expression for Q. Now we have to write the expression for Q first, don't we? We think about the dissociation of lithium phosphate. We have to write that out and make sure it's balanced, or otherwise this is not going to work. We have three lithium ions and just one phosphate ion, and so the Q is products over reactants raised to the power of the coefficient. And so that's going to be lithium ions cubed times the phosphate ions, and of course the solid is, is omitted. We're going to plug these numbers in, so Q equals the lithium ion concentration, which was 5.71, times 10 to the minus fourth, and we've got to cube that, times the phosphate concentration, 0.0429. And when you key these into your calculator, hopefully you'll find that the value for Q is about 8.0 times 10 to the negative 12. So that's our reaction quotient 
for this uh, reaction here in this, in this uh, situation. So once again, our last step is to compare Q versus K. Now here's Q, 8 times 10 to the minus 12th, and K is given to us up here in the problem. It's 2.4 times 10 to the negative 11th. So this time it looks like Q is a little bit smaller than K, isn't it? So what does that mean? Well, if Q is less than K, then it's safe to say no precipitate will form. And so this is how you can take two solutions, mix them together, and predict ahead of time if you're going to make a precipitate or not. The idea is compare Q with K. And remember, there's a lot of chemistry going on here because you have to know how to find the moles. That's a solution stoichiometry problem that we learned way back several lessons ago. And then how to write an equilibrium constant expression, doing the K part of that and, and, and the Q, and then comparing it. There's a lot of chemistry here. So this would be a very good question for maybe a free response on the AP exam. So I hope you've learned how to do this. And of course, there are lots more examples that we could go over, but time doesn't allow for it. If you've learned something from my video, if you'd be so kind as to smash that like button, I'd really appreciate it because that's the only way that YouTube is going to share my videos with other chemistry students. My name is Jeremy Krug. I've been teaching AP Chemistry for over 20 years, and I want you to get a 5 on your AP Chemistry exam and to make an A in your chemistry class. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again where we can learn some more chemistry together.